Hello statistics students, welcome back to your study help videos. This one's on chapter 4, which dealt with uh, standard deviation and variance, mainly. Okay, overview. Variability can be defined several ways. Um, a couple of the main ones are it is a quantitative, meaning numbers, quantitative distance measure based on the differences between scores, and it describes distance of the spread of scores or distance of the score from a median. So distance is underlined on all three of those, and that's the main thing that you need to remember about it. Purposes of measuring variability, they help us describe the distribution, and they measure how well an individual score represents the distribution. And there are three types of variability measurements, range, variance, and standard deviation. Okay, the range is the easiest in my opinion. It is the distance covered by the scores in distribution from the smallest value to the highest value. For continuous data, real limits are used. So the formula is your upper real limit for x and the lower real limit for x, maximum and minimum. So subtract maximum from minimum. And it is based on just the two scores, so not all the data. Um, and it's an imprecise, unreliable measure of variability. Um, probably because the formula is the easiest, um, so unfortunately we don't use this one very often. Okay, standard deviation and variance for a population. They're the most common and most important measures of variability. Oh, damn it. Standard deviation and variance for a population. Okay, the most common and most important measure of variability is the standard deviation. It is a measure of the standard or average distance from the mean. Okay, so deviation is how far away or how different they are. If you look up the definition in the dictionary, okay. And it describes whether the scores are clustered closely around the mean or are widely scattered. The calculation is different depending on if you have a population or a sample. And variance is a necessary companion concept to standard deviation, but it is not the same. Okay, so they are different. You'll have to remember these two. They are very important for your success in statistics. All right, standard deviation defined. Step one is determine the deviation. Okay, so it's just the distance from the mean. And there's your formula for it there. Step two is to find a sum of the deviations to use as a basis of finding the average deviation. All right? But there are two problems with that. The deviation sometimes sums to zero because mean is the balance point and if sum is always zero your mean deviation will always be zero so we need to do something else as it says down there at the bottom step two revised you remove your negative deviations okay so first you square each deviation score then sum the squared deviations that's where you see SS in the textbook alright step three is when you average the squared deviations mean squared standard deviation is the variance. Variability is now measured in squared units. Okay, so remember from, shoot, I guess I learned squares for the first time in elementary school. So five squared is 25, five times five. Population variance equals the mean, or the average squared deviation, or the distance of the scores from the population mean. This box down here is important. Step four, your goal is to compute a measure of the standard average distance of the scores from the mean. Find your standard deviation. Variance measures the average squared distance from the mean, which is not quite what you want. So we usually use standard deviation. And your formula is down there at the bottom. Standard deviation equals the square root of variance. Population variance formula. Okay, you've got the sum of your squares on top divided by your number of scores. Here are the two formulas for those. Notation over here is important and this formula here is important. So I'll let you look at that for a minute. Your notation for variance is sigma squared. That's sigma, the Greek letter. So variance is sigma squared. Standard deviation is just sigma because it is the square root of the variance. So you'd lose the square when you work that out with the square root, as you remember from algebra. Or should remember from algebra. 
standard deviation and variance of a sample. Okay, the goal of inferential statistics, if you remember from chapter one, is to infer conclusions about your data. All right, and samples differ from the population. They have less variability because you're pulling less information out because a sample is a part of the population, remember? And computing the variance and standard deviation in the same way as for a population would give a biased estimate. So you have to do it two separate ways depending on what you've got. Sample variance and standard deviation. Sum of your squares is computed as before. And the formula for variance has n minus 1 rather than n. So these are both for samples. I should have said that first. These formulas are both when you're looking at a sample. And the notation is s instead of the letter sigma. Showing mean and standard deviation in a graph. Okay, For both populations and samples, it is easy to represent mean and standard deviation. Vertical line in the center is, or where the center of the distribution is, that's why it's in quotation marks, um, denotes the location of your mean. All right? And the horizontal line to left, right, or both denotes the distance of one standard deviation. So here's an example. You've got your mean here, the vertical line, denoted down here, it's at 80. And then sigma is your standard deviation, and that has a value of 8 on this frequency distribution. And on this graph, you've got your mean here at 16 in the middle, and your standard deviation is 2. Standard deviation and descriptive statistics. A standard deviation describes scores in terms of a distance from the mean. So like we just looked at, we're using M and S. So that'll be for this one. All right, here's just another example. Your mean is 36. You have 20 scores, that's your N, and your standard deviation is four. So if you count on these boxes, there should be 20. And your standard deviation here denoted by the horizontal line is four, and this dashed line represents its value. So your mean is 36, standard deviation is four, so that puts you at 40 and 32.